76. I'm in the building with B Jack from G Rap. This yes, guy sir. has dropped eight albums since 2017 on Spotify. Ooh. He's done help mad artists out in Grand Rapids, man. What's up, my G? How you be? Peace, peace, man. That's a hell of an intro, man. I like that, man. Uh, said I'm good. I'm blessed over here, man. Real. How you how you doing over there? Ah, oh, man, I'm great, man. Just maintaining, man. So we just gonna dive right into it, man. So, um, it. how long have you actually been in the rap game, man? You know, I know you've been putting in work for years, <laughs> man. Bro, shit, since what? Uh, two thousand. I say when I really took it serious, honestly, was two thousand like one, two thousand two. Uh, that's around the time, like right before me and you met. Matter of fact, yeah, like a couple years before me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did a couple um tracks with me, man, on my um doing my thing album, man. Yeah, remember yeah. that, man. We had two songs still doing my thing, and um, I'm just doing my I'm just doing my thing, and uh, what's the other one? Um, Something, uh, is it like that? I believe so. I think so. Yeah. I forget. It's been so long, I forget. Um, man, I wish you could find that joint, though, man. <laughs> I, I, I want to say I got it in my storage somewhere. I just got to dig through my CDs and shit. I probably got it somewhere. Word, word. This man, my, with uh, so many albums, man, that you got, man, what keeps you motivated and keep keeps you going man keep making these albums man bro I just, I just realized and i say uh miss sassy just reminded me this is my 21st project bro right that's why i said eight from the streaming yeah but, you know i started but the over. other but the other ones man you had mad albums before the streaming era you know yeah. and you got so many albums what keeps you motivated to keep making albums you know what? It's it's just in me, bro. I am a true artist. I'm a true MC. I tried to quit plenty of times, you know, and you know, I feel like um when you got a talent and this and, and your talent is not just for you, you going you going to have to do it. Like it's it's like something that just pulled me to do it. Like I wake up in my sleep and I got a full song and I go right to the booth, right. you know what I'm saying? I write some shit or just spit it out. You know, it's just it's crazy, but I think what really motivated me lately is um seeing like all the elders uh elder uh hip-hop heads get their flowers and come back like nas and az and come back and hit shit up right right you know they, right. they could come back at 50 and drop stellar projects like they doing bro i should have no problem <laughs> right right you know um like the verses you know like that makes you go back and want to uh check out their music you know, like like some of like you said, Nas and then Three Six Mafia and all them yeah, after the verses set. that makes you want to go back to the music and want to uh, check it out. You know, and I think that's cool. And I think know? I think now, and, and I'm, it's funny you say that because I was just you know telling Sassy and a few other people, you know, with the digital era, and because everything is moving so fast, by the time a person do catch on to you and they figure out you got so much other music, they go back and listen instantly. It's like, oh, what was I missing? You know, right, right. I did the right. same with like Benny the Butcher and you know, uh, let's say all the Griselda cats when they finally got bigger. Yeah, you know, I had I, to I, go back and check they work out. Yep, right, right, right. But, um, we know you got Hustle Ghetto King Part Two coming out, man. Hey, it's dropping tomorrow. That <laughs> man, Midnight Baby on all streaming platforms. I'm so proud of this project, man. This is like, you know, this is my baby. You know, I feel like this is like my my first album in a way but even though it's not my first um it's my first album since nightcrawler which you know a lot of people didn't realize was a double project it's 25 songs yeah. it's 25 songs and i couldn't fit it on one disc when i was burning it for people in the streets like straight up so it's a double yeah. album and i designed it that way that's why you got the jack bag on b side but anyway you and and rebel and a few other people told me that hustle ghetto king the first one was y'all favorite project for me, so it made me want to do a second. Right, and it definitely is, man. The second one is, I don't even know which one I like better, man. Like <laughs> this, this second one, I yes. can guarantee you, is definitely no skips on it, man. Y'all, y'all out there gotta check that out, man. Woo! 
it's um it's some songs man that i really like man like my wave I'm and listening. attitude you know um what inspired you to write that man like my wave okay so my wave was a joint that um was produced by 1519 music group sassy okay. and our the project uh she found these producers i hadn't even heard of them until i i heard that beat um and it already had the hook on it and i forget my man's name who, who actually owned the hook but um i paid for it all right and I, I was sitting on it for a minute i actually had that since i was doing nightcrawler but music right. music hits us at different times differently you know what i'm saying right. it could take Definitely. you a while just like with my project you know people would go back and listen to my shit. oh that was doper than this or now i can see where it came from sometimes i sit on beats right. like that too but for the most part most of these beats are all new from this year from new up and coming producers but for them i think actually only two beats is not produced by me you know what i'm saying on this project i did the whole project is yeah, yeah them beats definitely fire bro thank you like, man you i've know, been working hard yeah i see i see the improvement man like the your your beats matches your voice man you go hard like soulful beats man like them the type of beats I always like. Yeah, I see you doing big things with that, man. For you real. Know, but um, what I what I gotta say for real is, what what's really been inspiring me, honestly, is the up and coming artists that's been coming to me, asking me for help because I could have slowed down with the output of projects that I'm doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, I guess it, it was more like they inspired me to keep going so i could inspire them because they need it and i could see it you know what i mean so i gotta leave i just gotta lead by example and i don't i have the studio right in my home so i don't take that for granted you know i think about when Pac was able to uh record like hundreds of songs before he passed and then you know you had machiavelli right. sitting out, out in the streets you know what i'm saying of under right, the right. Studio, and i wanted that same feel plus you know little wayne is still fucking active as iconic as he is so it's like dog it there is no limit you can and, and, and also i wanted to just really honestly bro you know me i love hip-hop i'm a true artist i wanted to run rap circles around these niggas out here bro for real that's yeah that's you're definitely doing it man three stay plus, consistent three but plus, you got like three, three albums this year three pro i say two albums technically because anger management was a mixtape respectfully so but that came out of nowhere honestly it it was like the idea came from a situation in the streets that happened and then i made anger management within five days no bullshit yeah y'all gotta make sure y'all check out anger management too that joint is fire too man thank you man you a, lot of, a lot of people just now you know like i say my high output and the way i've been doing it you know people is it's hard for them to keep up for right. the people who already know me but what i'm telling you is I could I could show I'm gonna send you screenshots after this and uh I got fans in Germany Australia places I never freaking right. I never I never even been bro like it's like it's, it blows my mind oh yeah I understand that because I got uh fans in Indonesia and Nigeria and Africa and I want to oh, yeah, say it's thank like you. and I want to say thank you real quick not to cut you off but because you put me on fucking uh gun rules finest part uh three the movement out now go check that out um with riding through gun root that's been one of my top stream songs this year bro it's been in really? my top five stream all year bro no bush oh so wow. thank you for the honor that. and opportunity to be on your project as well i uh, got no doubt man i'm gonna get ready to have a new one because you know it's gonna be 2022 so it's time to make a new one that's right you know should be out by june that's but right. yeah with so many projects you got do you want to really stay independent or do you want to sign to a major label eventually eventually i feel like that would be the goal just for the you know the mass marketing and shit. and for me to also i feel like if i was to get that opportunity i would be able to come back and open up doors for the rest of west michigan like nobody else has you know with all due respect to you know uh a lot of dark man and uh you know willie the kid they haven't came back and you know really opened up doors for other artists to really put them in that position right. not saying that they haven't tried but it hasn't happened 
So yeah, you know the industry, man. It's a shady business. You know they keep you in them slave contracts, though. You know, and I'm I always tell that. people, man, that the um, the major labels is just a bank with connections, man. That's it. <laughs> That's really it. That's all it is. And they, if you a new artist, most likely they're gonna keep your masters unless you have leverage. You might got some leverage since you got so many fans and, and projects. Albums. You can probably negotiate the masters, but new artists, they really don't understand that part. And that's why they sign, and get, get the advance, but that, knowing that they owe so much money that they actually are paying for everything. Up and front. I've heard so many horror stories from TLC to I mean, Warren G. Big Sean was just on Drink Champs just the other week uh, talking yeah. about the same shit. How his first deal he, that he still in is the worst deal that thousand you know, his, dollar advance ever seen. Yeah, he had the worst oh, deal. The Fifteen grand advance. <laughs> yeah, that should be. And he best. sat on the shelf for how many years? At least you know? four or five. Yeah, but that was back when they had artist development. They don't even have that now, so it's gonna be even worse for these up and comers if they don't already have their brand and let's say their image and shit established before they go to the label. Right, because that's really what yeah. keeps them in jeopardy anyway. If you don't know who you are as an artist, because they're gonna ask you, all right, what is your brand? How do we market you? You know what I'm saying? Before they right. do anything, that's what it is. You could wrap your ass off, but if we can't, well, this, you're gonna sit there. Well, they don't sign you unless you're already doing something anyway nowadays. Exactly. You know, it's very rare that a brand new artist that don't know nothing or ain't got no music out get signed these days, like like the, how they did in the 90s. You got to have a buzz. Rare. Otherwise, otherwise you're an industry plant because you already got somebody that's in the industry that could just, all right, well, come on, let's go to the studio and then your song in two, three months is on the, you know, the, the uh, streaming charts and shit like that. Come on, man. That's like we're rust. Even though he's independent, I seen an interview and I caught it because I've been waiting to figure out if this nigga had connections from his family or something for the music industry. And he does. His father yeah. was in the music industry. So that kind of gives him the leverage before he got to doing his thing anyway. So it's like everybody can't do what Russ does. You know what I mean? For I seen that interview, too. And um, they were saying that most people that's in the industry has somebody in there, like their dad, their uncle, their cousin, yeah. somebody, they know somebody in the industry. Yeah. And even um, Prada Russ- Deep, Even Prodigy from see, Mob Deep had a, uh, had a uh, auntie or his mom was in the, uh, was in the yeah. Atlas Guild or something like that. So it was like right. a direct correlation, so yeah. Yeah, cause that's, that's how you get in, you know, cause that's somebody always missing. got a family member. That's all I've been missing. You know what I'm saying? If you go back yeah. and listen to Rap Star, which I took it down off streaming sites, I'm gonna put it back up because I'm gonna remaster it. But um, I, on, on that song Cosign, I said, you know, uh, I need a cosign because nowadays the, the the underground will fuck with you, but they won't put you up there with the other tiers until somebody from the mainstream comes and basically cosign you, do a song right. with you even, you know what I'm saying? But I still, honestly, I want to be independent. I would take right. a production deal, or, or I mean, uh, um, uh, yeah, a production deal for because I got artists under me, you know what I'm saying, already. Right. And, and I'm already acting as a label. So I, for me to just get an artist deal would be asinine. I would have to get a label yeah. deal, and it would have to be like, you know, um, all right, first of all, I'm making sure royalties is, is in, in, intact because I write and produce all my own shit. So, on that side, I'm trying to retain all of my shit. If we can't meet up on that, then I'm not signing the fucking thing. You know what I mean? Royalty. Yeah, so for you, you can okay. get a production deal since you write and produce and you're a rapper. So your deal probably would be structured a little different, you know? I need a deal um, like Baby. I need a deal like Baby or Master P, bro, because I know too many people and I'm willing. I am legit and you know this about me and everybody knows this You know me. I'm not just willing to put people in that position, but that's what I, I love to do. I want to see somebody else make it too. If I'm not the main one that jumps out the pen, and, you know what I'm saying, and Rebel is, go ahead, bro. That's what this is about. I'm, I I, I call ProFam ENT the launch pad label because I like to launch artists out to do their own thing. Nobody is stuck with ProFam ENT though. I go by project for project. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, and that was my next question, you know? Um, some of the people don't know that you got your own label, Profam Entertainment, you know, and you got uh, um, CC and Rebel and Marcy J. Salute to all so of them. It, 
And so if an artist come to you and be like, yo, I want to sign to your label, what can you do for me, fam? You know, well, what would you tell them? Well, I, basically I would tell them, all right, well, I'm not going to sign you to my label, but I'm going to represent you with my label. And then I'm going to show you how to be your own label unto yourself while we're built, while we build in this first project together. So we'll build this project and we'll also build the business and I'm teaching them the business. I'm giving them the distribution uh, 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 information, the publishing information, everything they need to win somebody else. If they do want to go get that big deal or somebody come to them because of the strength of the music that we're making, then boom, you are free to go and do what you want and you know what you want and how to get it. Can't beat it. And I'm doing it for a fair and cheap right. low price. You know what I'm saying? So holla at me, y'all. You know what I'm saying? For real. Yeah, make sure y'all yeah. holler at B-Jack, man. If y'all want to get y'all production done, man. Got mad beats <laughs> for days, you know. I got a thousand beats. You. I got over a thousand beats sitting in the can right now. Uh, rappers need beats. Hit me up. I, I, I ain't going to charge you nothing, man. We go off your budget. Feel me? Right, right, right. So I'm going through the album, and um, I don't see any pro film. I don't see Rubble or CC or anybody on there. Is it a certain reason why none of those artists were on this album? Um, honestly, yes, there's a number of reasons, and I'm gonna keep it, you know, um, close to the best. Not doing PC, but just being realistic. You know, scheduling issues. They were supposed to be coming up here more frequently than they were, but. For the most part, I sent songs out to mad people, bro. You wouldn't even believe. Caution was really the only person who sent the verse back. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's the only one I've seen on there. He was the only one who was able to get on this project. And he did this like two days before I was doing the mix and the mastering, bro. Like, he was like, I don't know if I could do it in two days, but I'll see what's up. And he got it back to me like the next day. Um, I sent some out to a few people. But for them specifically, I just, it, it wasn't about features on this project it's just about the overall message you feel what i'm saying and so right. i actually cut down from like 40 songs that i've been recording for this project and then you know i got songs for the pro fam compilation that we going through and i'm writing for uh you know hooks and, and sending beats to these artists too so right now i felt like after nightcrawler which got everybody on it except for cc because she came after that um yeah. and right after anger management really um I just felt like, you know, this album should be more personal and I didn't want to wait and waste time. I knew I wanted to drop it, you know, honestly for Christmas, but I couldn't get it done in time for Christmas. So I was like, New Year's is a perfect time. So yeah. Caution was the only one who that I knew that I sent out that actually could record and send some shit back to me out of like five people who actually sent the verse back. So he was the one that made it. But I sent that particular song to like two other people because I wanted like two other people from GR to be on it. So, you know, I ain't gonna say their names, but you know, y'all missed it. You know, maybe we can get on, get them on the deluxe. <laughs> right, right, right. And that leads into the next question. Yeah. Is it anybody you want to work with in Grand Rapids, you know, that you haven't worked with or any artists you want to reach out to and collab with? You know, honestly, I fuck with anybody from Grand Rapids, Muskegon, West Michigan. I mean, Michigan, period. Uh, I'm just a Michigan head. If you dope and you already got something going for yourself, then I want to fuck with you. The only thing I hate is to have to really, really find a, a diamond in the rough that got nothing going on for themselves and try to, you know what I'm saying, bring them up. That's a little harder. But at least if you already been in the mix of doing your own music, dropping songs, even videos, I fuck with you, you know. I like little Dion, you know what I'm saying? Um, oh yeah, that's my that's my little bro right there. I gotta get I him. I think I hooked you up with him, didn't I? Huh? Didn't I hook you up with little Dion? I think you did, but we haven't done a song yet. I actually want to get him on a song. Um, Shadow, me and Shadow been talking. Um, yeah, Shadow Sorcerer. We gonna get some. Uh, he actually gonna send me some beats. Um, for a project, I want to get a whole beat, uh, a whole project done with just Shadow Beats. You know what I'm saying? Because that was my my mentor coming up. Right, right. Shout out to Shadow, man. Salute what can we expect from B Jack from G Rap, man, in 2022, man? All I can say is bigger and better things, man. We blessed over here, man. I'm, I, I really am proud as hell for this album, bro. Because. Um, right. It's, it's not only personal, which all my music is personal, but this one, you know, 
from front to back, I wanted to put together a solid project that you could ride, you could ride to, uh, you know, to the club. You could clean your house too on a Sunday. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, <laughs> hey, no lie, I was cleaning up listening to your record, man. <laughs> hey, you know? that's love. And you know what, my cousin, For real. my cousins, uh, I sent it to them before I sent it to you because I wanted my family to hear it first. And they was like, we was listening to it cooking. All of them said that, you know what I'm saying? And they all was like, yeah. was cooking in the house, listening to it. And they all liked it because, and I wanted to make it to where it was like family friendly too. So it's not a lot of cussing on there. You know what I'm saying? No, it's not. It's not. And it's a lot of storytelling. And I, I think that's what's missing in hip hop right now, you know, but for the most part, I wanted hardcore bars, raw lyricism matched and mixed with the melodies on the hooks. You don't hear me singing through the verses. I'm a rapper, you know what I'm saying? But on the hooks, I give you a little bit of Mr. Tell the girl, Mr. Tell your girl, leave the back door open. That's my alter ego. <laughs> when I'm singing, Mr. Tell your girl, leave the back door open. That's my alter ego. So you'll hear him singing on hooks and shit. You still there? Uh-oh. Who was on that hook on my wave? Who was that? Um, hold on. Let me see. Make sure we record. Okay, we still recording. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm trying to remember his name, but it's 1519 Music Group who produced that beat and had the hook on it. And I forget the name, but uh, I have it for you in a minute. You know, I just I forget. I'm losing it because I'm thinking about somebody else, but it's not him. But it was the first time I ever worked with this, these producers. You know what I'm saying? And the thing about it is, yeah, those are fire producers, man. Definitely. Them yeah, and yeah. it was 1519 and then um DJ Fanatic Beats did the uh Steal the King, the first song, the intro. Oh uh, yeah, that was fire. As soon as I you heard know, it, I, I said this is an intro, and I honestly thought King Mentality was gonna be my intro for this project. Yeah. <laughs> and the um the last song, um that one was a perfect outro. It know? was hard, it was hard doing from the King with Love. And that was like one of the, the very first songs that I started writing and recording back in like, when did I start back in like the end of, let me see, Anger Management came out July. So it was like maybe September, I started working on this project. Word, word. Well, you definitely got some fire joints, man. I you want to let the people know um, where you can get all your music and um... go stream. P Jack on Spotify, Apple Music. Follow me on Spotify. I really appreciate it. My monthly listeners went up to like 200 something in, in a span of like a couple weeks since I put out the singles for this project. So I want to say thank you to all my fans and followers. Um, B Jack, uh, excuse me, B Jack's fans dot Wix site. Uh, you could go and uh, listen to the album right now. And um, I'm going to have it to where you can download it. And I'm going to have merchandise in the next week or so on the website. So. Yeah, man. Follow me on BJack uh, fans on Facebook, uh, BJack six one six Instagram and uh, uh, Twitter. Yeah, man. Straight like that, bro. I appreciate it. We gonna play um, one little game before we get up out of here, man. Okay. Yesterday <laughs> it was a meme, and they was like, "Would you rather have dinner with Jay Z, smoke a blunt with Snoop Dogg, party with Drake, go to the studio with Kanye?" Yeah. Or drink Chirac with Diddy. Which one would you choose, B. Jack? Okay. Well, okay. Say it one more time. Only one. I Dinner with Jay Z. Right. Smoke a blunt with Snoop. Ah oh, man. Party with Drake. Go to the studio with Kanye. <laughs> or um, drink Chirac with Diddy. I gotta say, go to the studio with Kanye because I'm gonna learn so fucking much in that small amount of time just watching him work and shit. I ain't even gonna ask him no questions. I'm gonna just watch him work for real. You gonna steal your music, man? You gonna do you like Big Sean? <laughs> no. Here's the thing, though. If you aren't his artist, he gives you credit on the song. Look at how many writers be on his song credits, bro. He gives his motherfuckers. Credit. Hey, he might take you off like he did Soldier Boy. <laughs> Oh, I, I believe he might. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's fucked up. No, hey, I think, he, had, he had took mad people off this Donda album, man. I don't blame him. You know how there's been plenty of people, and I won't call no names, 
But for these last couple projects that I've been putting out, I, I had to X some people's verses off off the project because it wasn't, it wasn't right. Like real talk, I won't say no names, but a few people is mad at me for the same shit too. I, they just don't mention it because they don't want to. I feel you on that, man. If, if if you ain't coming with it, man, and it's your project, you got to take it off, man. It's just the business. It's you just know? business. I, I usually give them a chance and an opportunity to try to re-record something though. And if they send something back and it's whack, then I just, you know, all right, I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> Right, right, right. Really? That's what so I think. You attack the studio session with Kanye. I think either the Kanye studio session or Smoke a Blunt with Snoop, that's just my man's. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna have you high as hell. <laughs> yeah, dog. I, I'm hey, good with that. I run with He Snoop. was backstage, man. He smoked like 20 blunts, man. Cat Williams said he just couldn't smoke no more. He kept passing him the blunt. <laughs> he was just like, when somebody did the same thing, I'm like, yeah, you can't fuck with Snoop on smoking, man. Nah, I don't think nobody can. Maybe Wiz, but. Uh, Wiz, Wiz the only person it. I would say. Wiz and Burner. Yeah. Just because Burner yeah. is the is the cookies man, you know what I'm saying? But Wiz be on, on, on Instagram burning them down. Oh, uh, yeah. I definitely couldn't hang with them cats, man. Yeah. That's but I uh, appreciate you coming on the show, man. Is there any shout outs that you want to give before we get up out of here? Oh, yeah. You already know, man. Shout out the whole team. Uh, CC Boss Chick, my little sis, Mercy J. Young Rebel PFG, they all got fire ass music coming this year. Stay on the lookout for them. Uh, DJ Blaze, my man, you know what I'm saying, right here. Rich P, Rich P 100, he got uh, some music coming too. Don't sleep on Rich P, he got some heat right. coming. Um, Miss Sassy, she do all my videos. We edit them together, but she does the video uh, production, everything. So she, uh, salute to her. And um, just shout out to the fans, man, everybody. From Grand Rapids to Muskegon, who been holding me down, man, for real, for real. Just salute to y'all, man, and shout out to my mama because otherwise she'll slap me. <laughs> <laughs> well, shout out to Guns and Roofs City, man. Make sure y'all stream Gun Roofs Finest Part Three, the movement, yeah. Spotify, title, Apple, all the streaming sites, man. Subscribe to the channel. We out of here. One love. Peace. Peace. All right, I'm gonna start this.